I want you to go back in time with me to 2004. Uh, my co-founders and I had just were kind of refugees from startup number one. And we just had this very embarrassing failure. Way in the public, we'd wasted a lot of money. There are people in this room whose money we uh, set on fire. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, so we thought, all right, we did everything right by Silicon Valley standards. And we were praised, and we were in this hot startup, and everything was supposed to go fine, and we got humiliated. So we thought, well, for God's sake, let's just try to make new mistakes this time. Because what's the worst that can happen? I mean, seriously. Uh, startup number one is about as bad as it gets. Uh, and so we built a new plan uh, for InView, and I'll tell you a couple of its key components. The first is that we shipped this product in six months. So I'm talking about the full 3D, instant messaging, social networking, virtual currency, user-generated content, blogging, photo galleries, the works in six months. I can see the smiles of people in the engineering department. I can always tell because they're doing the math. We call it the scope math in engineering, right? Okay, wait a minute. The budget was fixed six months, and we didn't have any money. We were you know, brand new startup. Uh, and you built all those features, so something had to give. And I want to be super clear about this. This product sucked. <laughs> okay? I was the VP of engineering. I was horribly embarrassed to show this to customers. But we were determined that this time we were going to find out whether anybody wanted to use this product. And I, I admit we were a little bit nervous. So we put out this crappy product under our own name. Any journalist who wanted to could have gone to the website and they could have you know, written an article about idiots from startup number one, you know, foolishly don't know what quality software means. And we, we were worried customers would try it and then they would see that it was terrible and they would tell their friends and we'd ruin our brand. I mean, we had these phobias. But we needed to have worried because nobody used it, because nobody cared. <laughs> Those of you who actually shipped the product online know that you don't just put it out there and all of a sudden everybody starts using it. In fact, we did such a bad job in marketing the product that nobody ever discovered how bad it was. Well, not exactly nobody. See, the thing is, we charge money for that product, um, which I know it's a bad idea, right? It's a horribly buggy product that would crash your computer, and we're charging money for it. But it's not that absolutely nobody would buy that product. Actually, we had certain people who were willing to pay us money for a product that basically didn't do anything. And you've got to ask, well, who are those people, and what's wrong with them? <laughs> That's a true early adopter. Those are people who were buying from us, not the product as it existed at that time, but the vision of the product that we thought it would be. And startup founders don't always like to hear this, but visionary customers are often smarter and more visionary than the founders of the companies that serve them. And so by being in constant dialogue with them from almost day one of our company's life, we were able to learn a lot of important lessons about what the product needed to become in order to eventually achieve mainstream success. Here, we're talking about getting users for a very different purpose. We don't want to get as many users as possible. And guess what? We don't have to worry about getting the right kind of users. Not a problem. The only customers who will talk to you at all if you're in a startup are early adopters, by definition. So you don't need to worry about, like, if someone's willing to talk to you, don't be like, well, they're not the right user. The fact that they're willing to waste their time talking to a startup means they're probably an early adopter of something. So the specific tactics of how do you get those users really depends on specific industries. I'm a big believer in search engine marketing. You know, that has really democratized access to new customers. Um, you know, Google AdWords is a great product uh, for doing that. Uh, I've also had heard stories of people having really good luck with very cheap uh, campaigns on StumbleUpon, which allows you to, to buy clicks very inexpensively. Uh, there's some people who are using Facebook ads uh, to be able to target specific kinds of users. And, and one thing that I have uh, heard a really interesting story about is you have a product that's designed to compete with some other product. And you create a Facebook ad that just says, that other product sucks. That's the, name of the, that's the name of the ad. Who clicks on that product? The people who are frustrated with the status quo. And then that gives you an opportunity to talk to those people. So that's the kind of technique you need to use to get to those early, uh, early customers. Yes? 